How's it going guys? Dragon Star Production here, back with another What If video, and in this edition of Dragon Ball What Ifs, we will be continuing the pretty popular What If Shall It Was Canon Part 6. And last time we left off with a fight with Super Boo, who just absorbed Kakarot. Shallot tries to push Kakarot, but not even with his Super Saiyan 2 form, is cutting it against Bukarot. However, to Shallot's aid, his son Leek and Kakarot's son Gohan have arrived on the scene with their potentials released from Elder Kai. Or, in other words, they've arrived in their ultimate form. Now with the recap over, let's jump straight into the video intro so we can go ahead and get this video going. Leek and Gohan say no words. Instantly, the two would rush in at Bukharat. Bukharat wasn't expecting to be knocked way back by the two its attack, but before he could even react, the two half-breeds stayed on the attack. Leek nails Boo straight in the stomach for Gohan just to kick him right across the jaw. Boo was going flying. In fact, Boo was in fact panicking. He thought absorbing Kakarot, he wouldn't have this issue, but Boo decides to attempt to absorb one of the two, but this doesn't even work thanks to Shallot blasting Boo before he possibly could on the sidelines. This causes Boo to rage out. He uses his candy beam, even throwing it towards Shallot, but Leek is absolutely not going to let that happen. So he jumps in and he actually is able to redirect the beam by punching Bukarat straight in the stomach, having the beam bend back, shooting into the air. Gohan then uses a Kamehameha, hitting Boo straight on. Boo is already more than defeated at this point. However, Gohan, Leek, and Shallot have no idea how to get Kakarot outside of Boo. Although the three are reluctant, they charge up their signature blast. So Shallot and Leek use a final cannon as Gohan uses a Kamehameha. The three maneuvers all wrap inside each other and collide into one big beam as it collides against Boo. Boo was helpless but the blast does engulf Boo. Sadly, this doesn't just mean that Boo's dead. This also means Kakarot is. This, of course, hurts everyone, especially knowing that Kakarot can't be wished back with the Dragon Balls. Well, at least not Earths. That being said, Shallot uses his instant transmission to go to Planet Namek, using their Dragon Balls to fix all the issues that Bobbity Boo caused, and this actually means that we're going to have a pretty easy time of peace with Kakarot actually being alive. And this is thanks to Shallot actually using his head and remembering that Namek has Dragon Balls. And with that being said, instead of talking about Battle of Gods right away, we're going to talk about the time of peace because a lot goes on. Not nothing major, but in training wise, there's a whole lot going on. So we'll start off with Shallot and his family. Shallot, of course, continues to train every day. Shallot trains with all the Z Fighter, but mostly Kakarot, Vegeta, and Leek. And speaking of Leek, he actually gets married to Eraser during this time skip. Leek is able to train as much as he wants though, thanks to Eraser actually being the founder of Star Zinni, a huge coffee shop. Yeah, maybe a Karen, I don't know. But now for Kakarot, he clearly trains. He even tries to fix the issues with Super Saiyan 3, although he finds out this doesn't work. The stamina drain is just too much for Goku, and he can't fix it. While Gohan, on the other hand, still gets married to Videl like he does in canon, and Gohan does keep up with his training, and this is only because he doesn't want to get left behind when it comes to power because he actually kind of has a little bit of a rival in League who also tries to push him and train from time to time. And... Finally, we're going to get to Vegeta's family. Typically goes the same as in canon as well, so I guess there's nothing really to be said there. So now, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into Battle of Gods. Beerus, the god of destruction, wakes up from his nap. Beerus has a dream of the Super Saiyan God giving him the motive to ask Whis about the Saiyans alive. Whis replies that most of the Saiyans that are still alive are on Earth, including the Saiyan who defeated Frieza. And with this being said, Beerus and Whis would head to Earth to find if the Super Saiyan God is there. However, we all know how this goes, and Beerus eventually gets tired of waiting on the Super Saiyan God because there's no delay on the pudding, but he still doesn't get the Super Saiyan God, so he's still going to blow up. And by blow up, I mean he's going to blow up the planet. And of course, the Z Fighters can't allow this to happen, so they all attempt to fight Beerus, but this doesn't work. Beerus with ease smashes the Z Fighters. Luckily though, 
Gohan comes up with the idea of asking Shinron to actually ask to explain what the Super Saiyan God is, and this actually leads to the ritual being the answer. However, the question is, who is going to become the Super Saiyan God? Well, Kakarot is the strongest, and you would think that it would be him, but in this scenario, I'm going to say no. Instead, it's going to be Shallot, and the reasoning for Shallot actually becoming the Super Saiyan God is, well, because Shallot remembers Beerus. He remembers him coming to Planet Vegeta, tormenting his friends, going into the palace, so he knew he had to be tormenting the king, and this just rumbled all over Shallot. It angered him, and he's seen all this when he was a child, and it just brought back all those bad memories. And Shallot politely asked if he could have the ritual done on him. And I believe everybody would actually be okay with this. Shallot then stands in front of Kakarot, Vegeta, Leek, Gohan, and Goten. And this causes Shallot to actually transform into none other than the Super Saiyan God. And he charges straight towards Beerus without even saying a word, catching him by surprise. And Shallot, with each punch, thinks of the people that Beerus has hurt in his past. And Shallot is actually doing better than Goku was in canon. Actually, a lot better than Goku was in canon. And the fight would actually last long, as Shallot would then slowly start to fade back into his Super Saiyan form. Although, not realizing it, as Shallot was still getting punches in, going straight in, nailing Beerus into the gut, catching him across the jaw. In fact, Beerus was impressed. If you want to say that Beerus was using 70% of his power, you might be saying that he might be using 80 now, possibly, because Shallot was enraged. With each punch, he was just getting madder and madder. But Beerus actually notices that Shallot fades from Super Saiyan God back to Super Saiyan and he actually charges up a destruction ball, ready to end the fight once and for all. However, watching on the sidelines, Kakarot couldn't allow this to happen. Kakarot then would gather up all the Saiyans, including Trunks this time, and Kakarot was now becoming a god as well. The ritual was done on him, and then he would rush straight towards Shallot as fast as he possibly could, and luckily catching him in time, right there to aid Shallot, push the ball back straight towards Beerus. However, Beerus just flicks the ball back as if it was nothing, destroying a planet. However, Kakarot then helps Shallot down to Earth, but Beerus then follows them. Kakarot gets into his fighting stance, but Beerus says no need. Instead, Beerus tells Whis to take Shallot, Kakarot, and Vegeta all to his planet to train. Beerus wanted a real challenge, and he believes that three Super Saiyan gods will be better than one. And with that being said, Shallot, Kakarot, and Vegeta all would train with Whis, and I'd say the three improve much faster because, well, Shallot's there. And I'd say they actually all achieve Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue much faster. However, they're not only the ones training in this timeline because Leek continues pushing his ultimate form alongside Piccolo and occasionally Gohan, who, like I said before, doesn't want to be left behind. But the biggest gain in power comes from Frieza. Yep, ROF still happens pretty close to as in canon, at least when it comes to Frieza's revival. With that being said, let's skip straight into Frieza's arrival on Earth because, like I said, his training doesn't change. We skip over to Leek and Piccolo who are actually training at this time, who all of a sudden feel a energy approaching without any hesitation. The two then charge towards the key, not knowing that Gohan was going to meet them there, as well as Krillin, Roshi, Tien, Bulma, and Jocko who also show up on the scene. The Z Fighters all wait for the ship to land on the ground. And when it does, they then see a familiar face, as well as a million soldiers rush out. As I said before, this was Frieza and his army. Upon Frieza's arrival, he notices the growth of both Leek and Gohan, as well as acknowledging the other Z Fighters' growth and power. But Frieza was cut off before he could finish talking by none other than Leek. Why are you here, Frieza? Haven't you died enough already? Frieza, though only smirks before he replies. Oh, what brave words for someone who has faced death before. But perhaps you have forgotten. I wish to get my revenge on your darn fathers. But since I don't see him, yours will have to do. Sorbet then from the sideline screams, attack. So the soldiers then charge right in at the Z fighters, but the Z fighters are all stronger than they were in canon. So they make much quicker work than they do in ROF. This, however, is when Frieza sends his big guns in, Sasami and Tagama. Sasami charges at Piccolo while Tagama then leaps towards Leek, being the strongest of the group. Piccolo, though, 
is much stronger here and he actually weaves most of Suzami's attacks until finally Piccolo charges a special boom cannon and nails Suzami right in the chest, killing him off. As for Leek and Tagama, this wasn't a fight at all. Right as Tagama went in for a punch, Leek then powers up to his ultimate form as he then dodges the punch as he blasts Tagama right in the stomach, obliterating him right then and there. Leek though then powers down to get ready to see what Frieza's next move was going to be. But Frieza had different plans. Frieza shoots a death beam right towards Leek's back as soon as he powers down. Luckily though, Gohan swoops in and shoots the beam off track due to a key blast. And the only thing this does is piss Frieza off. Frieza powers up quickly into his final form as he then rushes the Z fighters. However, Frieza didn't go for Leek, he went for one of the weaklings. Frieza wanted his revenge and to go for a swift punch, Frieza actually kills Tien before Frieza could do the same to Krillin. Leek, Gohan, and Piccolo would all intercept Frieza's punch, and the three are actually doing extremely well against Frieza at this time. In fact, they are actually have the upper hand against Frieza, and Frieza is actually feeling overwhelmed as he feels himself actually being pushed against the ropes, until he actually lets out an enormous amount of key as Frieza transforms into his golden form. And as soon as Frieza transforms, he now has the upper hand, especially because the three were quite tired after trying to fight Frieza before, not taking the shot to kill Frieza when they had him in his final form. Frieza then beats the three down to a pulp until finally Frieza is ready to finish this fight off. So he knocks the three all into the ground as he then charges up a death ball. However, the ball doesn't hit the three. Instead, Kakarot, Vegeta, and Shallot decided to join in on the fight. After seeing the three laying down and all the destruction of their friends, Shallot, Kakarot, and Vegeta were all enraged. All three full-blooded Saiyans powered up to their strongest form, Super Saiyan Blue, and they then dived towards Frieza. Kakarot nails Frieza directly in the spine, while at the same time, Shallot knees Frieza in the stomach, causing him to puke up, as then Frieza was then uppercutted by Vegeta right into the air. The three Saiyans then use their finishing techniques simultaneously. Shallot charges a final cannon, Kakarot uses a Kamehameha, and Vegeta charges up the biggest final flash he ever has as the three blasts combine, completely destroy Frieza and everything left of his army behind him. And with that being said, that's where we're going to be leaving off this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you smash that like button and I'll bring part seven a lot faster than part six actually came out from part five. And if you wanna see more What If videos, comment down below what you wanna see because I always wanna engage with you guys. That's why I actually have a new Discord, so make sure you guys join it. And don't be afraid to at me, just don't be repetitive with it. And I will answer your questions, thoughts, or whatever. I'm totally down to do that, guys. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video or in the Discord. I am Lord Frieza, Emperor of the Universe, and I advise you to like this video and subscribe to Dragon Star Productions, or you'll force me to use 100% of my power. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, but that won't be necessary because you've already hit the bell for all alerts and notifications. Ho, 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 ho.